You're watching Teen Kids News. I'm Luke. This entire season, we're celebrating our 20th year. Let's begin with our top story. This report is brought to you by the National Road Safety Foundation. Once again, we're happy to announce the finalists in a competition that truly helps to save lives. The Drive Safe Chicago contest is open to teens in Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, and Iowa. It's sponsored by the NRSF in partnership with the Chicago Auto Show, the nation's longest running car expo. This year's contest focused on passengers. The challenge was to create a 30 second PSA that gives a simple but important message. If you feel the driver is not driving responsibly, you need to speak up. Three finalists were chosen. They got to work with an award-winning production team flown in from New York to turn their ideas into professional PSAs. Before we show you the winning PSA, let's first meet the finalists. So my name is Taylor Washington. I'm 17 and I go to Maryville High School. My name is Kennedy Helmkamp. I go to Gillespie High School and I'm a sophomore. My name is Brooklyn Walker and today we are in Kokomo High School Career Center and I'm in 11th grade. I'm a junior. The process was the same at all three schools. It started with the students meeting with the production team. I'm Alan. I am the director and Mary and I work together as a team. I set up shots and she tells me how to change them. <laughs> well, my mom and I went to the freshman office and we held this meeting with the production crew on how to set up the scenes and how to, you know, act during our shots. And three, two. No, mom, it's not safe. Please keep your eyes on the road. You're right, sweetie. You do it. <laughs> we got plenty, plenty of, time. of time. That's great. <laughs> That's, That's great. great. Yeah, no, it is. Taylor says her PSA challenges the stereotype that it's usually teens who drive dangerously. And I wanted to show that adults can do it too. And you know, especially parents, because they, they're the ones that give you advice. But you know, this time it's the teens time you know, to show that, mom, maybe you shouldn't drive or you know, and give good advice. While Taylor decided to be one of the actors in her PSA, Kennedy took a different route. She recruited her friends to do the acting. Her role would be to assist the director. My idea was similar to the Disney Channel TV show, Live and Maddie, where the characters almost step out of their roles to talk directly to the audience about their inner thoughts and feelings. You know, I'm a little bit over the age range, so um, I had to go and watch, watch Disney and I watched the, the, the show and I thought it was, that was a really cool perspective because we get into tune with the kids um, and something that they're into. In three, two... Did I just blow through a stop sign? Oh well. <laughs> so well. <laughs> Brooklyn also decided to use friends for the acting roles. Like Kennedy, Brooklyn would help with the directing. Thanks for speaking up. That's what friends are for. 22 point things. <laughs> good job. That was very good. In Brooklyn's PSA, the driver gets a text that his father's very sick. He becomes upset and begins to drive faster. Therefore, the passenger needs to speak up about, hey, slow down. Satisfied that the actors knew their lines, the next step was to rehearse inside the car. So then after we went to the street where we were gonna film the scene, they had us rehearse and um, just go over how to act and what to say and where to look and how to position ourselves. The video crew set up the mics and cameras. So this is the microphone and I'm just securing it to the dashboard because we're gonna be moving. And this is the transmitter and the receiver. And we're gonna hook this up to the GoPro and we'll be good to go. In order to direct the actors, the producer, director, and assistant director had to squeeze into the back of the car. All right, door coming down. I was in the back of the car with my crew and I had my passenger and driver. Action. As we filmed them, I got to watch them and see what little details they missed and what I could help her teach about it. I thought they were really good. My little team, you know, got going on. It's pretty great. Isaiah's doing great. Katie's doing great. At all three locations, local police were on hand to close down the streets so the team could drive in complete safety. What are some of the biggest mistakes that young drivers make and that passengers can speak up about? 
Well, some of the biggest are probably driving too fast, number one, and distracted driving is another one. And that's something that the passengers can very well be aware of. And when they see something dangerous happen, to speak up. I was surprised to learn how much work goes into these things. I thought it was more like a one and done type of thing. Um, but it did, it, there's a lot of work that goes into it. It is a lot of work. With all the shooting done, the production team flew back to New York to edit the PSAs. We'll show you the finished spots when Teen Kids News continues. Welcome back. I'm continuing my report on this year's Drive Safe Chicago PSA contest. When I found out I was a finalist, I was very excited. I didn't think I was going to be one. I entered because it piqued my interest. Um, and, you know, I like writing, and I think writing the scripts kind of helped me with uh, just learning how to develop ideas and learning how to direct because I do want to pursue journalism. So I just wanted something that would kind of help me. It went very well. I've never worked with somebody um, as professional as this crew, and it was kind of stressful, <laughs> um, but it was very interesting and I learned a lot. Slate it. Scene three, take seven. Good, thank you. After the PSAs were edited, they were posted on the Chicago Auto Show's YouTube page. The public was invited to vote for their favorite. The winning announcements took place at a special awards ceremony. And we asked them to submit a 30 second PSA idea on how to be a safe passenger. It boiled down to three finalists. The unveiling of the winner for the 2023 Drive Safe Chicago PSA contest is Kennedy Hellcamp. Congratulations, Kennedy, you can come up. She is the grand prize winner of a $2,000 scholarship that she will be receiving from our foundation uh, along with the Chicago Auto Show. Um, thanking her for coming up with this idea, come here, <laughs> for coming up with this really great idea to empower passengers. Everybody's driving too slowly. She always speeds, but she's driving, so what can I say? I can beat this light. It was already yellow. There was no way we could beat it. Did I just blow a stop sign? Oh well. That's it. I've got to say something. Either pull over and let me out or slow down. You're going to get us killed. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. She's right. Speeding is stupid. Our first runner up is Brooklyn Walker. Come on up, Brooklyn. Woo! <laughs> great job, great job, great job. Want me to read it for you? Sure. Your mom says the doctor called. But your dad isn't doing so good. What? No. Are you okay? Maybe you should pull over. I'm fine. Just be careful. You're beginning to speed. It's a bad idea to be driving when you're so upset. We could crash! Slow down! I'm sorry. I didn't realize how fast I was going. Thanks for speaking up. That's what friends are for. Great job, Taylor. Hurry up, we're going to be late. Be right down, Mom. You know I hate being no, late. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll text them and let them know we're on our way. Mom, let me help. I can do it. I don't need any help. I've been doing this for years. No, Mom, it's not safe. Please keep your eyes on the road. You're right, sweetie. You do it. Again, we think these girls, they all did an awesome job. And again, they are all winners. Thank you, ladies. And you can be one as well. To find out about the other contests sponsored by the National Road Safety Foundation, go to 
nrsf.org. My advice to give, honestly, would be it might look hard and scripts are kind of hard to write, but long as you put the effort and time in it and if you want to put something in your life that happened in it, go for it. It's an opportunity anybody could win or anybody could have a chance at and honestly do it. As the old saying goes, you have to be in it to win it. So check out those NRSF contests. For Teen Kids News, I'm Ava. I'm Adi, this week's rising star, next on Teen Kids News. Slip by the phone, there'll be no call. This week's rising star is from Charleston, West Virginia. Her name is Audie. She uses her music to raise awareness of very serious issues such as mental health and suicide prevention. Sadly, suicide is something that has touched her personally. Her best friend killed himself. To mark the fourth anniversary of his death, Audie wrote and recorded a moving song, Four Years. Damn. Then no matter how long I said by the phone, there'll be no call. There's nothing at all except for years of standing on shattered glass. But here I'll stand. Four years of trying to change the past, knowing I can't. That song is so sad and yet so powerful. Tell us about the friend that inspired it. So the friend that I wrote four years about, his name was Luke. Uh, he was a friend of mine in middle school. He lost his life to suicide in 2018. He was 16 years old. Um, there were a lot of components um, towards that, but I think the main reason to that was obviously bullying and mental health issues. I don't really have much to say. Should I scream out of way? And I hope that that is present in the song because there are a lot of lyrics that kind of steer towards that. And um, I hope that, that song can bring healing to those that are also going through that, but those that have lost someone to suicide as well. I hope so too. Can you talk a little about the use of photos of Luke in the video? That was something that um, was envisioned from the very beginning and his family was so cooperative with that and appreciative with the way that um, everything kind of fell into place for that. And I was really uh, thankful that we were able to actually use him as a part of the video so people can kind of put a name to a face and kind of fill that song completely. Part of the lyrics have you apologizing for not being there for him. Can you explain why? I'm writing this song to tell you I'm sorry that I wasn't there. Cause I a lot of the time, they call it silent suicide. It's where you're not, you know, really aware of what's even going on in someone's life. And, um, or it's something that they don't really talk about or um, bring to the table when you're talking to them. Or, you know, you ask them, is everything okay? And they're like, yeah. Um, so, when I talk about that in the song, um, it is an apology that, you know, I wasn't there because I had no idea what was going on. That has to be so difficult. You were bullied also, weren't you? Yeah, I, um, I dealt with some bullying in my younger school years. Sadly, it's something many of us deal with. So you've made it your mission to not just speak out, but sing out about mental health. How does your music do that? Uh, a lot of the songs that I write personally, a lot of the songs that haven't even been released are songs that I'm writing about my own personal mental health. Um, I've struggled with mental health issues for a good while now. And um, that's very prevalent in the songs that I'm writing. I guess it's sort of therapeutic in a way. Very, very therapeutic. You've also recorded other songs, some of them covers, and you've gotten more than 40 million views. That's pretty exciting, isn't it? It is. That was uh, something that wasn't even supposed, well, it wasn't even going to be posted. It was me and my dad singing Shallow in our living room about three and a half years ago, I think. 
And my mom, like, after a couple tries of trying to post it and it wouldn't upload, she was like, I'm going to try it one more time. So she uh, uploaded it and it just kind of kind of took off. It was very surprising at first, but um, overall very exciting. And it got me a lot of opportunities and kind of catapulted me into the music industry. It sure did. You were recognized as Artist of the Year at the Josie Awards, the world's biggest awards show for independent artists. We wish you continued success. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm glad that I could talk more about mental health and suicide prevention and awareness. Audie will no doubt continue to talk and sing about this important subject. She recently signed with Pivotal Records, a label whose mission is to promote mental health through entertainment. Here's another song from Audie, Miss Me Baby. For Teen Kids News, I'm Katerina. We have to take a quick break, but don't go away because Teen Kids News will be right back. When it comes to studying, extra help can be very effective. It's as though you could clone yourself and divide up the work. Actually, a good study group is even better than cloning because you can use each individual's best set of skills. Study groups are standard in law schools, but you don't have to be a legal scholar to use their techniques. Here are some simple guidelines, starting with whom you invite into your group. They do not have to be social friends, and you can have different groups for different classes. At the first meeting, discuss your goals, your rules, and your schedule. For example, be very clear about when meetings will be held and what will happen if someone misses a meeting or comes unprepared. If everyone understands what's expected, it's easier to work towards success together. I'm Kristen helping you all make the grade. It's time for another short break, but we'll be right back with more Teen Kids News, so stay with us. Let's take another look back at the early days of Teen Kids News. One of the secrets of the universe has been discovered. Why some popcorn kernels don't pop. I started off as a field reporter and then I moved my way up to being an anchor. So I was very young at the time, so I just remember my dad coming up to me one day and saying, hey, would you maybe want to be on a news show for kids? And I said, that sounds like fun. And so we went to New York City and I did a audition of sorts or just a tape in their studio and I had pigtails and it was awesome. And then they liked me. And so they asked me to come back. One of my favorite memories is when I got to be when I got to be an anchor and I got to be in the studio and I got to sit in the cool anchor chair. Welcome to Teen Kids News. I'm Mwanza. And I'm Sienna. Here's our top story for this week. So I am an actor, a writer, and a producer. And one of the really helpful things that I picked up from Teen Kids News was reading off of a teleprompter. It's been infinitely helpful as an actor because I'm able to sight read things very easily. <laughs> to win an Emmy for Teen Kids News was one of the coolest experiences ever. We got to go to the awards ceremony. We got to hear our name being called out. The Emmy goes to Teen Kids News, US Naval Academy, WNYW Fox 5. I just remember we all freaked out. We were screaming at our table and we, cause we just, we were so excited to be there to begin with. And so winning an Emmy on top of it was just the cherry on top of a really fun evening. And I uh, I have my Emmy 
in my bedroom at home. It sits, sits proudly atop a shelf and looks down on me whenever I'm there. And it's, uh, it's the coolest thing. It's one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me in my life. Yes, it was super fun. I loved seeing everybody every time I came to set or went out to interview people and it was always so much fun. And I remember I was very, very sad the day that I came in for my last set of recordings and I was no longer a teen nor a kid really. And I officially looked too old and I was terribly sad. <laughs> Well, that wraps up our show for this week, but we'll be back with more Teen Kids news next week. See you then.